Good Friday. How can one describe such a day? The wrongdoing of all humanity putting to an end an innocent man, the Son of God. This is the story of Jesus' death by way of a cross, all in one moment bringing death to the bright light of our future. He never stopped loving us, and yet this is the incredible part of it. Our sin stopped his heart. Our sin drove the nails firmly in the hands of God. All along, these were the plans. We told ourselves that we were in control, and this was deemed sufficient for all of us. The brutal beating, the inhuman flogging, the naked humiliation. Heaven watched and saw it all. Our rebellion, our guilt, our shame, erasing the very notion of reconciling us with God. Our sin and our debt overcoming. Jesus. Here is our king, obliterated. The enemy laughing, his plans unstoppable. There's no longer the sound of freedom rising. Now God's people are utterly broken. Behold the chains of mortality. Yes, this is what is true. We had heard the stories of old. The lost are found, the blind can see, the weak are made strong. But now, we are witnesses to this reality. God is dead. We'd almost believed there is a way of redemption. There is a life of fulfillment. There is a peace beyond understanding. Now we know better. For us, we can say that God is encapsulated in this one realization. The single greatest sacrifice in human history is finished. How clearly we can see it. So what's so good about Good Friday? Just one thing, that the blood of Jesus can reverse the curse of sin and raise the dead to life. How clearly we can see it is finished. The single greatest sacrifice in human history encapsulated in this one realization. We can say that God is for us. Now we know better. There is a peace beyond understanding. There is a life of fulfillment. There is a way of redemption. We had almost believed God is dead, but now we are witnesses to this reality. The weak are made strong, the blind can see, the lost are found. We had heard the stories of old, yes, this is what is true. The chains of mortality utterly broken, behold freedom rising. Now God's people are unstoppable. There's no longer the sound of the enemy laughing, his plans obliterated. Here is our King, Jesus overcoming our sin and our debt, reconciling us with God, erasing the very notion of our rebellion, our guilt, our shame. Heaven watched and saw it all, the naked humiliation, the inhuman flogging, the brutal beating, and this was deemed sufficient for all of us. We told ourselves that we were in control. All along, these were the plans firmly in the hands of God. Our sin drove the nails, our sin stopped his heart, and yet this is the incredible part of it. He never stopped loving us. The bright light of our future all in one moment, bringing death to death by way of a cross. This is the story of Jesus, the Son of God, an innocent man putting to an end the wrongdoing of all humanity. How can one describe such a day? Good Friday. And crucified, laid behind the storm, you live to die, rejected and alone. 
like the rose trampled on the ground you took the fall and thought of me just let us rise up our feet and sing and lay behind the storm you live to die rejected and alone like the rose trampled on the ground you took the fall and thought of me one more time sing crucified and crucified lay behind the stone you Rejected and alone like the rose Trampled on the ground You took the fall And thought of me Above all You're above all powers And here we are to worship you, Lord we are mindful of the cross, of the sacrifice that you have paid it all. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross, and I'll never know. How much it cost to see my sin upon just let's lift our voice and sing and I'll never know how much it yes Lord to see my sin upon that cross see so here I am to worship here I am to worship, here I am to touch. Let's worship our Lord this morning. Shall we all lift our hands and sing that you're my God. You're all together lovely. You're all together worthy for this Lord. Oh yes Lord, you're all together wonderful Lord. Just listen to this out loud. Here I am to sing. Yes, Father, here we are. You're my In your God. presence, Lord. You're all together, You're all together lovely. lovely. You're all together worthy. You're, all together You're so wonderful worthy. to us, Lord Father. All together wonderful to me. Amen. He's a good and wonderful God. The God who is sacrificial to us. He made all things new on that cross. How much we can thank our God. Welcome to the house of God, everyone. And to everybody watching us online, we are here to celebrate the good God. The God who sacrificed for us. We are here to celebrate the God who is able to make all things new. Can we lift up our hands and say, 
thank you god here i am to worship here i am to bow down and say that you are my god listen we might be coming from different places different backgrounds different states but the beautiful thing is that through that cross we are welcomed to one roof to one family and to one purpose that we are all called to be living under the mercy and grace of our lord jesus christ amen. can somebody amen. say amazing grace amazing grace amen if you are happy and glad can we sing the song together together for the love
Amen, amen, amen. There's power in the blood of Jesus. How many of you believe that? Amen. Let's all sing this song together. For this wonder working power in the blood of Jesus. And roll free from your burden of sin. This power in the blood. This wonderful power in the blood. Just let's sing this together. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. Yeah, there is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Your passion and pride This power in the blood This power in the Power in, in the blood, blood. Amen. Come for a cleansing To Calvary's time This wonderful power in the blood There is power Power Wonder working power In the blood In the blood Of the land In the precious blood of the Lamb Amen Let's give thanks to the Lord for this wonder working power Come and sing with me We give thanks for the blood And it's wonder working power All our praise And all our praise Goes to the land and it's wonder working power. Yeah, yeah. Would you be wider, much wider than snow? This power in this power in the blood, power in the blood. Sin saints are lost in his life giving flow. This wonderful power in one way there is power, 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 power wonder working power in the blood of the lamb there is power, power, power wonder working power in the precious blood of the lamb there is power Sing of 
amazing love of our God forever. Amen. It is amazing. We stand amazed in the presence of the love of our God. Can we look up to heaven and sing this song? God, I stand amazed in your love. Your love changes everything. This Good Friday, we believe that you're going to change everything in our lives. You dance over me while I am unaware. You sing all around, but I never.
last time with our hands lifted high. Come on, church. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Yes, Lord. Lord, I'm amazed. You're amazed by your by love. You. But your Lord, sacrifice. I'm amazed by How you. you love us, Lord. Have you loved when you laid your life for us, God. Lord, I'm amazed. Oh, we praise you. By we worship you, Lord. Lord, we I'm worship you, Father. By you, Lord, I'm amazed by you. Have you loved me? Oh, we praise your name. Let's give praise to our God. Let's shout for joy for the Lord, for He is your strength. He is your God. He is your Redeemer. For there is none like our Father. We let our praise rise and go towards the ends of the earth. Let's shout, for He is our Savior, He is our Redeemer, and He is Lord. Let's all be in this attitude of worship, saying, God, I'm here in your presence. And I'm here, Lord. I will shout your name to the ends of the earth, for there's none like you. Oh, we praise you. Oh, we thank you, Lord. There's none like you, Lord. And shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains, mountains bow down, and the seas will roar at the sound. Of your name And I sing for joy At the works of your hands Forever I love you Forever I stand Nothing compares to the promise I have in you You see, nothing compares Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise all the wonders of your mighty love my comfort my shelter tower of refuge and strength let every breath and all that I am never cease to worship you 
promise I have in you. Just with one voice. Let's sing nothing compares. And nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Oh, we worship your name, Father. For oh, nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Nothing compares for the, for the promise that we have in you, Lord Jesus. Church, you may be suffering a lot. You may be going through a lot of trials, tribulations, temptations in your life. But know that... Even if you feel that no one loves you, even if you feel that there is no one by your side, you're all alone. There's no one to redeem you. There's no one to help you. There's no one to help you cross that river. Know that there's a father up there in heaven who looks down at his children saying, I love you and I'm here for you. At all times, we sang song like, how amazed are we it is love. We, can, we sang, I could sing of your love forever. We sang all the songs to remember the love that the that Lord has showered upon us. He came to this world. This morning we are taking part in Good Friday service. Being reminded, being mindful of the cross that, that the Lord has sacrificed himself upon. Lord. For us, for me and you. He died on the cross for us. And it's all because He loves us to free us from the slave and the bondages of sin and death. He came down to this world. Though we, we do not deserve it, though we had nothing to do, but still His love overcame everything. Can we sing this chorus one more time? With one voice, together with one voice saying, Shout to the Lord, all the earth. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your promise I have in you. Just listen to this last line one once again. And nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Can we give the Lord a clap offering? <laughs> Hallelujah. Nothing compares to the promise that we have in you, Jesus. You have changed everything for us, O oh God. You have changed everything for us, Master. And for that, we worship you. We give you the praise. We give you the adoration. And on this day, we remember the cross. And on this day, we remember your sufferings. On this day, we remember everything that you've been through for us, O oh Lord. Your word says that by your stripes, we are healed. We were lost, but now we've been found. We were far from you, but now we have drawn closer to you. Lord, we were lost. We were wretched sinners. We were dying in our addiction. But you gave us new life. You've given us your word that you will come. And you came down, Lord. You came to die for our sins. You paid the price that no one could ever pay. You paid the ultimate sacrifice for our sins. There was nothing that could take our sins away. But your blood that was shed for us has... has 
given us a new life, O oh Lord. And for all that we praise you, Jesus. Can we lift our hands and praise our God and say, Jesus, I thank you for your blood. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for everything that you've done for us on the cross. Thank you for the love that you've shown towards us. That while we were sinners, you gave it all for us. You loved us, O oh God, even when we were unloving. You loved us when we did not deserve it, Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship you. We worship your holy name. We worship your holy name. And on this day, we remember the cross. We remember the sufferings. Remember everything that you've been through for us. We love you, Jesus. We love you for everything that you've done for us. Oh, yes, Jesus. We will shout your glory forever and ever. We will sing of your praises. Because you are the promise keeper. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Nothing compares to the promise that we have in you, Master. Can we lift our voice and sing that line? Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Yes, Lord, nothing compares. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Father, we thank you for everything that you've done for us. Thank you for sending your son Jesus into this world. Thank you for setting us free. Thank you for paying the price for our sins. Thank you, Lord, for your sacrifice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen, amen, amen. You know, today is a day to remember what Jesus has done for us on the cross. Every year we go through the season where we remember his sacrifice, the price that he paid for us on the cross. Uh, you know, if you ask the question, did I deserve it? The answer is no. Did I deserve, did I deserve such a great sacrifice? No. Because the Bible says that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The Bible goes on to say, it is very rare that anyone would die for the ungodly. Maybe for the good, someone will. But while we were sinners, when we were lost, He paid the price for us. Because He knew that one day we will turn to Him. And here we are, worshipping Him. Amen. Isn't that amazing? Shall we just lift our hands and say, Lord, thank you for your sacrifice. Just express your gratitude, church, for the sacrifice, for the cross. Because without the cross, we wouldn't be here. Without the cross, we wouldn't be standing here. Without the cross, we wouldn't be alive. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Thank you for everything. In your most precious name we pray. Amen and amen, amen, amen. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Our God is in this place. You know, we worship the God who is alive. We worship the God who gave his life for us. He gave his life to redeem us. And if you think of, and if you look at history and ask the question, is there anyone who has done what Jesus has done? Anyone? You know, there are so many people who claim to be something different, something, you know, special but when you look at history there is no one who has done what Jesus has done and that is why we as Christians gather together and worship him because we acknowledge that without that sacrifice without that great sacrifice our life would be in vain amen without our without that sacrifice we wouldn't be seated here now we are running short of time and I'd like to go straight into the word and meditate on the sufferings of Jesus. And, and I want to speak to you on the subject called, Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. I think when Good Friday Easter comes around, we can all say, Lord, thank you for loving me. Because it is out of love that God gave his life for us. Out of love, nothing else. The Bible says that he first loved us. Not we, 
you know we didn't even take notice of him the bible says that he first loved us i don't know what your response would be on this good friday but i want to share with you from god's word about why this is such a special day we call it good friday because good things happened on this day though at, when we look back at history there are people who are sad about this day but soon they realize the disciples of jesus realized that this death is not the end this death is not the end but instead it's the beginning of greater things i tell you church if it wasn't for this day you and i would not be in church if it wasn't for this day you and i would not have known god if it wasn't for this sacrifice you and i would have been great sinners so lost in the ways of this world but 2000 years ago god sent his only son jesus to die on that cross he sent his son to pay the ultimate price for our sin you see up until that time people were taking animals with them birds with them to offer sacrifice to pay a price for their sin but all those sacrifices were not good enough it was not good enough but when jesus came and gave away his life on that cross when he became the ultimate sacrifice and took away the sins of the past the present and the future once and for all he paid the price to save us from our sins and you know the price that he paid redeemed us from darkness the price that he paid broke the chains of oppression in our life the price that he paid set us free see until then we were captives we were lost we were spiritually blind but when he paid the price we can now see the blindness is taken off from our life for those of you who are here at the beginning of the service you know we we played this video and the title of the video was what is so good about good friday what is so good about good friday have you ever wondered have you ever wondered that question what is so good about good friday have you ever pondered that have you asked yourself what is so good about good friday let me tell you what is so good about good friday what's so good about good friday is that on this day jesus paid the price for us and as we think of that we are reminded of this eternal truth that he paid the price because he loves each and every one in this world there is no group that is exempt from the love of god he loves everyone he loves all of humanity good friday reminds us that god never stopped loving us and he will never and he never will it reminds us he has never stopped loving us and when we hear that message the next thing that we must ask is did i deserve that love did i deserve such an amazing love the answer to that question is obvious the answer is no i didn't deserve it the bible says like this in romans 5:8 but christ but god demonstrated his own love for us in this that while we were still sinners what happened christ died for us so who are we were we super righteous were we the holiest of holiest i think we were we were lost we didn't deserve we were filthy we were contaminated with the world we were addicted to the lusts and the desires of the world we were sinners we did not deserve anything nothing zero in fact the bible says that by nature we were children of wrath who are we children of wrath look at in ephesians 2 3 says like this all of us also lived among them at one time gratifying the cravings of our flesh following its desires and thoughts like the rest we were by nature deserving of wrath if you look in the new living translation i don't know if it's there it's a oh, great it's there it says like this all of us used to live that way following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature who are we following the sinful nature inclinations of the sinful nature and the bible goes on to say by our very nature we were subject to god's anger which means we deserved god's anger we were subject to god's anger now i read this verse in the message translation and it put it like this beautifully you know the verse continues ephesians 2:3 the message says like this we all did it 
all of us doing what we felt like. This is who we were. When we felt like doing it, all of us in the same boat. It's a wonder that God did not lose his temper and do away with the whole lot of us. Instead, what did God do? In his immense mercy and with an incredible love, he embraced us. I want you to underline that in your Bibles or in your Bible app. It says like this, with an incredible love, he embraced us. What's so good about Good Friday? What is so good about Good Friday? With an incredible love, he embraced us. It is a love that is so amazing that words cannot describe. It is a love that is so beyond words can even put together. It's a love that transcends all the earthly expressions of love. It is a love that cannot be described in words. It is a love that changed you and me. Are you with me, church? It is love that changed you and me. I'd like to remind you something, that if you're seated here, you are here because of God's incredible love. If you're here, alive in this place, worshipping God, singing all these songs, it is because of His incredible love. God's love has brought you into this place so that you can learn about Him, so that you can grow in Him, so that, he can be, so that you can become the person He wants you to be. God loves you and me. And so when we look at what Jesus did on that cross, all we can say is this, Lord, thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. Now I have more to speak on the subject, but before that, we're going to sing a song along the same lines. And as the worship team comes forward and ministers through us, to us to the, through the songs, I encourage you to sing along if you know this song. The song is titled, Thank You for Loving Me. It reminds us how we were, but what Christ did for us. Church, I tell you, if you can leave this place just thinking about the cross, your Good Friday is complete. That remembrance of God's suffering is complete because he took that pain. You know, last night we watched the sufferings of Jesus. We watched the passion of Christ. You know, though I watched it before, yesterday when I watched it again, my heart melted in gratitude because if the Son of God, Jesus, did not go through that for me, then I would be so lost. But because of what he has done, my life, our life has been transformed forever. Amen. Can we think of that love today? Yes. Can we sing about that love? The worship team will minister to us through song. Protect and 
endless trust and hope And it has no end It's your love That lifted me up from the depths Set my feet on a solid rock With a firm place to stand Lord, I always will trust for loving me Jesus can we look into the Lord in prayer and say Lord thank you for loving me on the cross you made history if it wasn't for that we would be lost in Jesus name amen as we think about God's love as we you know sing about God's love I want to share with you three things that God's love has done to us Three things that God's love has done to us. The first thing that God's love does to us is that it cures our loneliness. 
when we experience god's love what happens is our loneliness is taken away you know when you look at the ways and the systems of the world the ways of the systems of the world are such that it causes loneliness it's a system that loves the one and hates the other if you're from a good family background if you have something great to talk about perhaps you may be accepted but if you're not you may face re- rejection people are often treated well because of who they are and the connections they have that is the worldly standard but what is god's standard god treats with love care and respect no matter what background you come from simply because you are his child because he created you are you with me see god's love cures us from our loneliness if you look at <clears throat> ezekiel chapter 16 in this chapter we see the origins of israel who were israel who was israel because you know every father sorry every child will have a father and a mother right but when we look at the history of israel we see this one man abraham from his line comes a whole nation but then where did it all start what we see in the book of ezekiel is that at a certain point in time god is very upset with israel and he tells them this is who you were this was your origin and we look at this god does something so amazing for israel if you turn with me to ezekiel chapter 16 was 3 to 5 we see god's love towards those who were despised and rejected ezekiel chapter 16 was 3 to 5 this is what the sovereign lord says to jerusalem your ancestry and your birth were in the land of the canaanites your father was an amorite and your mother a hittite on the day you were born your cord was not cut not were you washed with water to make you clean nor were you rubbed with salt or wrapped in clothes verse 5 says no one looked on you with pity or had compassion enough to do any of these things for you rather you were thrown out into the open field for on the day you were born you were despised this is israel's origin this is how they began as a nation they were rejected and they were despised god speaks to them through the prophet and says this is your condition this was your condition you were despised thrown out in the open field israel was an unwanted child but guess who wanted israel guess who wanted israel god God chose Israel. If you read the following verses in verse 6, it says like this, then I passed by you. Saw you kicking about in your blood, and as you lay there in your blood, I said to you, live. If you go to verse 8, God says, later I passed by when I looked at you and saw that you were old enough for love, I spread the corner of my garment over you, covered your naked body. I gave you my solemn oath, entered into a covenant with you, declares the sovereign Lord, and you became mine. What do we see happening here? A nation that was rejected, despised thrown out into the open field when they were born who chose them god they had nobody they were thrown out into the open field and see what happens here god chooses them this is what god love god does his love takes what the world despises his love captivates those who are lonely it takes the orphans and gives them a home Israel on the day she was born there was no one to take care of her but God in his great love chose this unwanted child to be his own but later you know they make great boast that how great a nation we are God reminds them you are nothing i chose you out of my great love you know when we think about loneliness when we think of people being despised and rejected i was looking up some statistics in the morning today and i found a website called campaign for loneliness campaigning to end loneliness and one of the first things i saw on the website is this they said over 60% of people in the world today are battling with loneliness now this is prevalent among the rich or poor doesn't matter any class they are battling with loneliness 
You see, loneliness is the first step because after that comes de depression and a whole lot of other problems. And one of the things is that loneliness can cause a person to hear unusual things in their mind. They will hear unusual voices in their mind and those voices are called as the voice of the enemy. Loneliness can lead to sleeplessness and in some cases even harming themselves. Now what is the cure to loneliness? Some will say get married. Some will say have friends. But if you do some research you'll find out that there are people who are married, surrounded by very good family, very good spouse but still feel lonely. The cure to loneliness is found when we come to Jesus. When we come to Jesus, receive his gift of salvation, we will be cured of loneliness. That is what God's love does for us. You see, there was a time when I was battling with loneliness. But the day I truly met Jesus and repented of my sins and gave my life to him, I tell you, I've never been lonely ever since. Because his love is so incredible, his presence is so incredible that you can be out in the desert somewhere where there is no one around you, but you'll still feel like you're surrounded by a great army. You'll still feel like you're surrounded by a great power. You can walk through the darkest valley and never feel afraid because of his love. You can walk through the most difficult situations and moments of life where everyone has turned their back against you. But you will never feel lonely because that is what God's love does for you. If you're someone battling with loneliness, I invite you to experience God's love because his love is the cure to loneliness. Ask Jesus to be the master of your life. Give your life to him and everything will be different. Are you with me? What does God's love do for us? It cures our loneliness. Second thing, what does his love do for us? We're talking about God's love. What does his love do for us? His love gives us value and purpose. If you go back to the same passage in Ezekiel 16 verse 9 to 14, God continues to talk about Israel and her origins. Verse, verse 9, I bathed you with water and washed the blood from you and put ointments on you. I clothed you and, with an embroidered dress and put sandals of fine leather on you. I dressed you in fine linen and covered you with costly garments. Verse 11, I adorned you with jewelry. I put bracelets on your arm and a necklace around your neck. If you go to verse 13, let's jump to verse 13. So you were adorned with gold and silver. Your clothes were of fine linen and costly fabric, embroidered cloth. Your food was honey, olive oil, and the finest flour. You became very beautiful and rose to be a queen. You see what God's love did? Gave new life, gave value, and gave purpose. God takes Israel that was first despised, rejected, thrown out in the, into the field. But what does God do? He takes Israel, makes her his own. And verse 13 says, you became very beautiful, rose to become a queen. See, this is what his love does. It gives you value. It gives worth to your life. See, when you look at the ways of the world, Unless you meet a certain criteria, you're never good enough. If you look at the ways of the world, unless you meet a certain criteria, you'll never be good enough. But when you look at the cross, when you look at what Jesus has done, when you look at his love, if there is any meaning, any value to our life, it is simply because of his love. If there's anything worth in my life today, it is simply because of his love. Because when I experience his love, my value of who I am, my worth increases. God, the Bible says that you became beautiful and rose to become a queen. Verse 14 says, and your fame spread among the nations on account of your beauty because of the splendor I had given you. You made your beauty, what is that word? Perfect. You see what God's love does? You may feel like I am unlovable. Like I don't deserve anything. I feel like I'm worthless. I invite you to experience God's love because his love will change you forever. Amen. The cross, what Jesus has done on the cross for us, his sufferings, his love towards us adds great value to our life. 
You know, Paul echoes the same message in 1 Corinthians 1.18. He says, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, what is it? It's the power of God. When we realize what cross truly means. Because sometimes, you know, people will look at it and say, hey, you're celebrating. You know, you're, you're, you're getting together on this day when your God died. The world will look at that and mock at us sometimes, saying, your God died and you're gathering together and singing about it. How sad. They don't understand the value of the cross. Because for those who understand the value of the cross, those who really know what the cross means, the Bible says, it is the power of God. It is the one that adds value and worth to our life. Are you with me? Are you with me? Finally, I want to share this. What, is the, what does God's love do for us? We are chosen because of His great love. In the song we sang, one of the choruses goes like this. Thank you for choosing me to be a child and to bear your name. It's such a beautiful line, you know, when we were putting together the worship songs yesterday. And as I was preparing, sitting there at the back preparing yesterday, the song came to my mind and I thought I should preach about this song. You know, some of those songs that we sing, uh, this, this, was, this is written by Tommy Walker. I love, love him, fantastic songwriter. Amazing, amazing songwriter. You can preach based on the songs that they write. Uh, some of the modern songs, you can't even give an exhortation. <laughs> it's that bad. But some of these songs that were written years ago have carried so much of meaning because it reminds us that His love has chosen us. His love has selected us for a great purpose. If we read John chapter 15, verse 16, Jesus tells His disciples, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit. What does his love do to us? It chooses us. If you go to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 to 5 it says like this, for he chose in us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. And then it says like this, in love verse 5, he predestined us for adoption to sonship. According, through Jesus Christ in accordance to, with His pleasure and will. Isn't that amazing? What does God's love do to us? We may be serving in different areas of life. You may be in the medical field. You may be in the engineering field or in finance or whatever field you are in. I tell you, God has chosen you to be there. And why has He chosen you? He has chosen you because He loves you. Out of his great love, he has selected you for something greater. You may be in the ministry, you are there because of God's love. Something that my mentor would often remind me saying, he said, Joshua, you preach because God loves people. Not because you are great. It's because God loves people. He's faithful to give his word to the people. What drives our fellowship? What brings us together day after day? Are we jobless that, you know, we have nothing to do just but just come to church? What is it that brings us together? What is, what is it that makes us follow after God? It is because we have experienced that love and we want to run behind Him. In John 15, 16, Jesus tells His disciples, You did not choose me, I chose you. The Bible also reminds us that we do not love Him first, but He loved us first. And it's all because of that cross, all because of what He has done for us. Let us be mindful of that today. Let us be mindful of that today. That every day of our life, we will live rem remembering the cross, remembering the love that He has showed for us. And if we can just do one thing today, that will be saying, God, thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. Can we all stand up? Can we all stand up? And let's say, Lord, thank you for loving me. Thank you that on that cross, you gave us the victory. You died for me so that my praise will go to thee. Thank you for loving me. 
It is your love that cured my loneliness. It is your love that added value and worth to my life. It is your love that has chosen me. It is your love, O oh God. O oh God, thank you for loving me. Can we just sing the chorus of this song? Oh, thank you for loving me. Oh God, thank you for loving me. For on that cross you made history. Lord, you died for me forever. My praise will go to yes, Lord. Thee. Oh God, thank you for choosing me to be a child and bear your name. Oh Jesus, I will never cease to sing your praise. Thank you for loving us, oh God. It is because of your great love we stand here. Church, can we lift up our voices and say, Lord, I thank you for your love. Your love changed me. Your love picked me up from the merry clay. You set us on the rock to stay. We were lost, but now we are found because of your love. We were dying in our sins, but today you have healed us of our infirmities, healed us of our addictions. You've broken the chain of the oppressors for which we praise you. We praise you, Jesus. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us, Jesus. We worship your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. We're going to go into the Lord's table and I ask that, that we would prepare ourselves to participate in the Lord's table. You know, the Lord's table is for those who have made a decision to follow Jesus and to live for him for the rest of their lives. Now, if you're someone who has not made that decision yet, you may be seated. But if you're someone who is walking with a relationship with the Lord, following him, seeking him, if you've made that decision, continue to remain standing because we're going to serve the Lord stable to you. And as we participate in this table, as we take the bread and the juice, let us remember the body of Jesus that was broken for us. Yes. Let us remember the blood of Jesus that was, that was shed for the forgiveness of our sin. Hallelujah. Can we say, Lord, prepare me for that table. Sanctify me, God. Purify me and make me whole. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Shall we just pray, say, God, prepare me for your table. Prepare me for your table, oh God. I want to be mindful of the suffering, mindful of everything that you've been through for you, for, for us. You've done it so that we can be redeemed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want to read a passage of scripture from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. This is the passage that reminds us of the Lord's table. It's a passage that reminds us about why we do this when we come together. Why do we participate in the Lord's table? 1 Corinthians 11, 23 says like this, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. 
for those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ eat and drink judgment on themselves that is why many among you are weak and sick and a number of you have fallen asleep but if we were more discerning with regard to ourselves we would not come under such judgment nevertheless when we are judged in this way by the lord we are being disciplined so that we will not be finally condemned with the world we are reminded of two things here that as we participate in this we are proclaiming the lord's death until he comes we are remembering what he went through for us and finally the bible reminds us when you do this do it out of careful reverence if you're carrying unforgiveness in your heart if you're carrying hurt of the past if you're carrying certain things that is displeasing to the lord let it go ask god to heal you right now confess your sins before the lord and he will forgive you and restore you prepare yourself for the lord's day lord prepare us forgive our shortcomings sanctify and purify us oh lord so that we can live a life that glorifies your name in jesus mighty name we pray amen amen we're going to participate in the lord's table and as we do as i come around and share the bread and the juice i request that you don't eat or drink immediately but wait till all of us get our portions and then we can eat and drink together amen received our portions we're going to participate in the lord's table now let's take the bread that symbolizes the body of jesus that was broken for us let's eat this together
let's take the juice that symbolizes the blood of Jesus that was shed for the forgiveness of our sin let's drink this together hallelujah worthy is the lamb seated on the throne can we sing together hallelujah jesus and worthy is the lamb yes, seated on the throne seated on the throne we crown you now and crown you now with many crowns you reign victorious I am lifted up Thank you for everything that you've done for us. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the suffering. Thank you that you showed your love. And as a church, we stand here in this place on this very special day, and we say, Lord, thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us, Jesus. When we were still sinners, when we couldn't love ourselves, when we were worthless, thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving each one of us, oh God. It is your love that has changed us forever. It is your love that has transformed us. And so, Lord, help us to live our lives in such a way that pleases you, that brings glory to your name. That till the end of our lives, we will be shouting your praises, singing about all that you have done. We worship you. We adore you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen, amen, amen. You know, on this very special day, we have meditated on the cross. We have pondered over why Jesus died. It's simply because He loved us. And on this day, all that we can say is, God, thank you for loving me. That you went on the cross for me. So as we go throughout this day, let us be mindful of the cross mindful of everything that Jesus has done and let us tell him Jesus I thank you I thank you Lord for everything I thank you Jesus thank you amen God has so spoken to us through his word God has ministered to us through songs of praise and worship continue to be in the attitude of worship throughout this day remember everything that Jesus has done and God will continue to bless you and guide you amen Let's close our eyes for the benediction. May the love of the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of us for now and forever. Amen and amen and amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. Have a blessed day. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, we'll have our Easter service on Sunday, same timing, 9 o'clock. So do join us. Bring your friends and family as well. God bless you. God bless you.